God's beauty is all around us and my goal as an artist is to capture and interpret that beauty on canvas and to take you, the viewer, along with me on this painting journey. Hello and welcome to Painting Journeys. My name is Kitty Lynn Klisch and I'm really glad you joined us today. We have an exciting uh, uh, adventure uh, journey that we're going to be taking. But first of all, I want to talk to you about our last episode. If you'll remember on our last episode, I was doing a, a demonstration of a peace rose. And um, here it is, it's all completed. It's um, what you call a uh, kind of a contemporary uh, approach because I've painted around the edges and you don't normally frame that type of painting and it's larger than life um, of which is is kind of fun to paint really big once in a while and uh, so here it is my my piece rose I, I made quite a few corrections from the from the show I deleted a lot of the uh, petals that I had I'd gotten kind of carried away as I was painting and talking to you and so cleaned it up a little bit and here it is and I'm quite happy with it. I like it. So, so today um, we're going to take a journey to Freiburg, Germany, and um, um, beautiful, beautiful place. It's in the south uh, western part of Germany, and it's um, well. It just I have some photographs. Let me share these photographs with you because it's just really so beautiful. One of the big things about, uh, about Freiburg is that they uh, have this marvelous square. It's called the Munster Plaza. And um, it, it's the Munster Square in Germany called Munsterplatz. It's the central square in Freiburg in the, the big red ornate building on the left side of the photo is the historical merchants hall and that was built in 1500s and um, there they actually found silver and and they were a very freeburg was a very wealthy city until it ran out in the 14th century that's how long ago that their, their silver mines went up dry. And then the city turned more toward, uh, it's fo focused more towards culture and science. It's a really, really um, uh, warm, friendly place, and, the, and it's a, one of the sunniest places in Germany. In fact, they call it like the Mediterranean of, the, of Europe. Um, the Freiburg Münster, or cathedral, of Our Lady was started in a Romanesque style, as shown in this picture, um, in, the, in the 1200s. Freiburg did not join the Reformation and remained a strong center for Catholicism. So that's just one side of, the, of this huge, enormous cathedral that everything is kind of centered around. This is another side. Now this, the architecture continued. When it did continue, it continued in um, 1230 in a more Gothic style, as you can tell by this. And there's actually uh, gargoyles that look like they're mooning people. And there's a legend uh, there that um, the gargoyles were actually uh, uh, the architect didn't like the fellow across the street. And so he made the gargoyle look like it was mooning the person across the street. But of course, that was just a legend. That was just a legend. Anyway, here's the interior of the church. Uh, it's just inside the cathedral. It is so beautiful. And at the very far end is the tower. The uh, tower was completed in the Gothic style in the 1330s. Um, the Allied for forces actually bombed the city uh, in 1944, and everything was destroyed, but um, no north and west of the cathedral. But the Monsignor had the good sense to take the windows out of the tower, and the blast uh, did not harm 
the church or the tower. So that was really something. Uh, they have a market there, the market every day but Sunday. Uh, everybody brings their wares. It's really something they just, they, uh, anything that you could think of that you want to eat or, or purchase, they have it. But uh, back hundreds of years ago, they had no way to really weigh or tell how large uh, like say a loaf of bread was. So they actually, in, uh, in the church, they actually cut this, this um, uh, squares in the church by the, where the marketplace was and they carved it and they used that as a measurement uh, for size to determine the price of bread and other goods that they, were, that they were selling. So those different sizes that were carved right in the stone they could just hold the merchandise up there and they'd know how much to charge. And then, um, you know, when you visit someplace like that, it's just so hard to decide. Um, you know, you, 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 you look at all your pictures and you think, oh my gosh, I only have an hour. What, what am I going to paint? And so this, um, this painting, or this photograph rather, it shows the part of the historical merchant's hall and it shows the building next door um, to it in the square. And I was, I was really taken with how neat it must be to live up above um, this beautiful building with these gorgeous window boxes. And to be able to look down into the square and see the different markets. So I decided to paint this picture. But of course it was a little too, a little too much going on. So I had to crop it even more. So this is what I am going to be painting for you. This is the building. And it says something right down here on the bottom. And if I'm not mistaken, I think this means that this building was built in the 1400s. So it's very, very interesting, very interesting. So without further ado, we had better get started now that I've given you a little bit of, of the history and shown you some photographs so that you know where we are. Why, now we better start painting. Okay, I'm gonna start, I think, right back in here and get that kind of a grayed look that I want. And my picture doesn't do this justice when this building is such a pretty mint green. Um, it really just kind of takes your breath away. So I'll be making it a little bit darker when I do it, a little, you know, a little deeper, the mint green. Um, I'm really glad you joined me today. This is a, a real treat to be here, be with you. Here we go, we're gonna make up some nice gray. Hmm, paint's a little stiff. Yeah, we'll just have to thin it down a wee bit. There we go. I got a new palette. And it, I got a, I had my trusty old wooden palette and it just, you know, it just was so old and there were so many knife marks in it and everything. I decided, well, I'll get a new palette and I'll get one of those fancy round ones that, that um, um, fits the hand and, the, you know, they're supposed to be ergonomic and all this stuff and, uh, it'll fit my hand and my arm better. And well, to tell you the truth, it's not, I'm not real happy with it because, ooh, that doesn't look gray enough. Uh, I'm not real happy with it because it's a flat wood surface and it doesn't, it doesn't, um, the paint doesn't slide around on it and it's kind of a disappointment. I need to lighten that. Alrighty, here we go. It 
So I'm finding, what I'm finding is that my paint dries a lot quicker. All right, that, but hopefully now that kind of a violet gray is gonna help that uh, green show up even better. Now let's make some of the, that beautiful green. So we're going to use a little sap and a little cerulean blue and see what we get. Yeah, see the paint just doesn't scrape off of this nice and I don't know, I asked the lady where I bought it if if I should varnish it and she said no I wouldn't but I don't know I think my other one was varnished I don't like this at all don't like the scraping sound it makes well <clears throat> live and learn huh trial and error that's what they say and I won't I promise I won't complain about it for the rest of the show I'll deal with it <laughs> All right, let's see here. We'll add a little bit of this. A little more white. That's considerably brighter. Maybe we need a little bit of red in there to gray that. We don't want it to be too bright. Everything, you know, needs to be grayed a little bit. You can't paint um, um, objects with like crayon colors, comic book world. Let's see, maybe this is a little better. Yeah, I think that is, it just needs to be lightened just a little bit more. Okay, now we have a nice pile of that. And, right, now, let's see here. We have the reflection of the flowers going back into the, the window here, these flowers here. And also looks like there must be some trees across the street because there's a little bit of tree over there. This window doesn't have any reflection in it and it's kind of gray. So I'm going to, I'm going to make that window. I'm going to go in there and make those windows. Uh, the, um, I like to paint from the inside out. So And then a little lighter. And mm -hmm. see by doing this, I'm I I that helps me to um, put one thing on top of the other, of which helps to make it look um, a little more three dimensional. I've, I've never figured out a way to paint uh, where I could paint everything all at once and have it look three-dimensional. It just doesn't look three-dimensional to me unless I approach it in a three-dimensional three manner. And I want that little bit of dark there and there. Okay, so there's one window. And then here... Now we see a little shadow right here. So we're gonna come right here and put that little gray shadow right there that is the reflection of this window. And you see how thick, you see how thick that is from here to here? That building, probably the walls of that building could be as, as thick as two or three feet. It's amazing when you think about it, you know, how they had to build these structures to last um, 
all, all of those years, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years, we, uh, uh, our church is just 50 years old. Um, and we're thinking about remodeling it, you know, adding on, building onto it. And you, I think about all these churches that I saw when I was over in Europe and Italy and everything. And I, and I think to myself, my gosh, why don't the things here last like they did over there. Why is that? I mean, you know, here we, we, we didn't have the major wars that they had in, in um, um, Europe and all of the strife and everything. We, we didn't have that as much. And yet our buildings just built 50 years ago are not, are already needing repair and and work on them, and what, what what would the answer to that be? Is it is it the workmanship? Is it the amount of years that it took them? You know, three, four, five hundred years to build something. Is that what would make it make the difference between what we have here in America? I don't know. I can't figure that out. I'm trying to make this so that we looks like we have a little bit of a of a um, reflection from something going on in there. Okay, that's good. And then this one over here is the same way. It has the the stark right in here, of which is the reflection of this windowsill. And then it has the green on it also. I bought uh, some new sap green, and it's quite bright. Uh, it's the same, the same brand that I normally buy, but it almost looks, I have to dull it down a little bit. It is so bright. I love sap green anyway. It's one of my favorite colors. Okay. And then... Maybe we'll put a little a little pink in this one. Maybe that's what it needs. Oh, kitty, you and your big brush. There we go. There we go. Hit that gray one more time. There we go. All right. And now then the gray that is right here is quite a bit grayer. People in Freeburg are very warm and friendly. Um, in fact, people say that the reason that they're smiling all the time is because they have the sunniest area in the country. And of course, Freeburg is just south, or uh, just west, excuse me, just west of the Black Forest. So they're very close to that. And you know, the Black Forest is famous for 
cuckoo clocks and black forest cake. So there we go. And let's see, we have this coming up here and here, and we have a little more gray here. So if you visit Freeburg, you mustn't miss going a little bit further and seeing the Black Forest. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful place. And a little bit lighter. Now I can always lighten that up a little bit later if I want to, um, of which I probably will. I'm making it awfully dark looking now, I know. And I can come back and take a little more white and put on top of that. There we go. All right. Now we'll do the um, get a small brush. And this looks like a good one. And um, We have some dark that is going right back here. It's a shadow from where that shutter is sticking out. There's a little bit right in here where this sh shutter is sticking out. Boy, this is some of the thickest paint. I think I put my palette, got my palette ready too early and it started to dry on me. Alrighty. And we have this right here, right behind this one. I can't wait to get to this lamp. I think that is gonna be so neat. Um, Okay, let's get a square brush. Put this one over here. I want to mix up a nice warm white because the the building is is um, going to be kind of cool, so I want it to be a nice nice warm white. A little more yellow. Okay. Something is really sad. Um but beautiful too. In 
during World War II when Jewish people were rounded up and taken away from Freiburg. They were sent to France and then in 1944, I think it was, they were all sent to Auschwitz and were killed. And as you walk along the streets in Freiburg, you see little brass, bla brass plates and commemorating each and every individual Jewish person that was taken away. They'll be there forever to remember them. I think that's just so touching. It doesn't hardly make up for anything, but it's very, it's a beginning, it's a start. Alrighty, here. Okay. See, it's just like building, huh? <laughs> do the building. I think I'm going to get that building on there before I do the shutters. So we'll get a nice big brush. Oops, excuse me. Get a nice big brush here and go to work on this building. go. Colorful, huh? <laughs> I love it. Nice bright colors. Oh, you should see over there. I mean, the, that beautiful merchant hall, the big red merchant hall. Oh, my God, is that gorgeous. And that was built like in the 1500s. Can you imagine? All right, we're having fun. Are we having fun? I hope we're having fun. Okay. Now we have to wipe the paint off of the brush because we've got a little bit of a hard edge here. We're going to come back over that and that, and we're going to soften it because we don't want it to look quite so hard.
Hmm. Got a little crooked on me there. Oh, well. Ah, what the heck? All righty. And now we have all of this down here. I think we better get a little, go with a little bit of a darker down here behind the, and we, and of course we're, I, I do not see them, but that doesn't mean I can't put them in there because I have the brush in my hand. So that means I'm the master of my painting. Um, so at least I'd like to think I am. <laughs> I'm going to put a little bit of a shadow down underneath here. A little more, a little more. So that we, when we put those, oh, the on, then we have a little bit of shadow in here. Okay, and then we'll go to the light again. Make this just a little bit darker right in here. All right. A little darker over here because that, that, um, curly Q uh, black thing I, uh, that is holding up this lamp post that's sticking out here. This is actually coming off of the uh, merchant's um, building there. And then we'll go with a little bit lighter. Maybe make it just a tad warmer. Hmm. Sometimes I do things on this palette and I think, oh, why did you do that, kitty? But then maybe it looks okay. Yeah, hey, that's okay. That's okay. There we go. And then we have a little bit of a lighter stripe that it has a little bit of gray and a little bit of green in it right here. And that is a statue right there of, it looks like somebody in a gold, but I, the way he is, I'm, I don't think I'm gonna pay a lot of attention to him because he's um, there on the corner of the painting and kind of sticking out and I don't really think I wanna um, give him a lot of interest, a lot of detail. Not down there. Okay. Alrighty. And this should come down too. By taking these brush strokes and making them go down, I make it look like more of the side of a building. Um, rather than the top of a table. And we'll just come up here. Oh, shoot. Wrong brush, kitty. Wrong brush. Well, we'll take our white trusty wipe out. Can't fit, there isn't anything we can't fix with the wipe out tool and we'll do that. Boy, whoever thought of the wipeout tool.
guy must be a millionaire. There we go. All right, it's coming along. Um, before I forget about it, though, I do think I, I, I want to put a little skinny brush. Oh my, I've got dropsy today. There we go. Um, I want to put this little bit of printing that's right in here. And I'm not I'm not gonna make it say exactly what it is what it says there. I just want the, you can barely see it. And I just, I want that, that effect there, that there is something printed there. All right, now we better get back to those windows. Um, let's see. Okay, we've got to do, oh, I forgot a window. I sure did. Now, which brush did we use? Let me see here. All right. Must be this one here. Yeah, we have another window here that has a little bit of, of green in it. I didn't even see that. We'll put a little pink in it too. And then I want to try something. I, I think the windows need to show the window pane. I'm not the window pane, but the, the, the window sill just a little bit more. So I'm going to try to get that in there. Um, it's white coming right there and here it's white or even and here This is quite a bit whiter right there. I think my white has got an awful lot of green in it. I don't know what happened there, but when I get it to my home studio, I'll, uh, I'll be making the corrections on it. So I'm not gonna worry about it now. I'm just gonna keep forging, forging ahead and um, hoping for the best here. Let's see. Maybe this will help. Okay, I want to try that a little bit over here. It's kind of hard to know. Well, no, I better put the white in first. Okay. I can just, you know, I, I, I just can imagine living here 
and looking down at that market, uh, I almost want to paint someone peeking out the window or, or watching out the window like they're looking down. I mean, can you imagine? And the history, well, they have lovely museums over there. I'll tell you, wonderful places to visit. Oh, my white is gotten dirty. You know, I know it wasn't there, but as I'm looking at this, let me put this back up here. As I'm looking at this, as I'm looking at this, I'm thinking it almost needs some flowers or something coming down the top here. Um, might not be a bad thing, a thing to think about here. Okay. Some darks in there just to show the edge of that window a little bit. I know that we don't really see that, but this is something that I found out over the years that will really help a window look like a window is if you put just a little dark there. That helps to give it a little depth. And then here and on this side. Here we go. And see, let me get that green brush. And sometimes if you just kind of like, you know, do a little softening and um, just a little tiny bit to kind of, there we go, yeah. And, then, and that gives it a little more um, depth. That's, that's what I'm, that's the word I'm looking for is depth. Alrighty, and then we're going to do that same thing over here on this window. Mm, we better put the white on first, though. And white brush here. Okay. Let's see here. I got a little confused. I think we need the white to be here. There we go. And so the white is coming down here. Oh my goodness.
Mm-hmm. No, I'm not talking to you enough. Um, and we've got less than 15 minutes left, so I want to try to get some of the flowers in and get some of the lamp in. And so we've got to move it along here. Um, so I think what I'm going to do for now is I'm just going to block in these white shutters and without too much ado so that I can get what I feel is important to show you on there. And we'll do some finishing up with those at our home studio. Every night, close these shutters. Isn't that something? To have shutters to actually close, that actually close on your home instead of like what we have here. The lifestyle is so different, so much easier. I mean, sure, they hustle and bustle like like all big cities, any city does. Everybody has a purpose. Everybody's got some place to go, and they're in a hurry a lot of the times. But they also know how to relax and slow down and enjoy the market and enjoy the good food that is there being sold. They go to market every day and buy their food and what they're going to eat that day and things like that. I mean, it's, you know, it's a little more, um, I think it's a little more cosmopolitan, a little more um, relaxed way of living a person's life. Okay, hmm, I'm seeing right now that these are not far enough over. Alrighty, I just got the high sign. 10 minutes to go, we better hustle. Hustle, hustle. It's the name of the game now, kiddo. Okay, so this is our lamp, and I'd like that lamp to look like it was burning out. You know, like maybe this is the, the lamp didn't shut off at the very completely yet, and so there's a little bit of oomph in him. There, and I want to do this, this red up here because that's going to add a lot to him, that red that is um, of that building. Mm, I'm not going to bother with the gold trim right now. We don't have time for that, but... But that red, oh, because against this green, the red is going to really sock at home. Okay, now I just 
completely covered it with shadow. And now I'm going to come back with some lighter red. So we'll give it the highlights. There we go. And okay. Now then we need the some green down here where the plant is. And we're kicking it now, kids, because we have run out of time. And I really, I hope that, that you have enjoyed your visit to Freiburg <laughs> and to the Monster Plaza and to the beautiful church, the Catholic center archdiocese for that area of the country and all the other nice information that i gave you maybe you'll feel like you did really and truly take a journey today Oh, this guy here, we've got to do something with him. We can't just leave him like that. We're just going to kind of block him in in gray. And we'll deal with him later. We'll just kind of scoodle him out here. How do you like that word, scoodle? Okay, oh, we only have five minutes left. Ooh. All right, quick, quick, quick. Quick, quick, where's that brush? Okay. All right, and we have this. And we have this coming like this. We have this, and one here, and one here. And we have this coming down here in a circle. And then we have this coming across here. And this is coming down like so. And this is right here. Oh, and I wanted to tell you, you know, if you are interested in purchasing any of the programs, any of the Painting Journey programs, tapings, 
be sure and uh, email me with, and just put painting journeys or television show in the, in the um, subject line, and then I will be glad to get in touch with you and find out just what show it was that you were interested in seeing, and be glad because, you know, if there's any of these that you want to watch again and or own or give to a, a friend or something like that, why, I would be more than happy to make sure that you get your own personalized um, autographed copy. Okay, kids. They are screaming at me. They say two minutes. I don't care. I'm putting flowers on these bushes if it kills me. There we go. We have flowers. We have a building. We have our light. We have our merchant square and some windows. So there we go. I think we're done. I think we need just a little brighter red on the flowers in a couple places. And of course, I'm going to be doing a lot of this over. I just wanted to quickly try to wrap it up so that you would have a nice fond memory memory of your journey to Freeburg. So once again, this is Kitty Lynn Klisch, and I'm really, really appreciate, glad, honored that you joined me today. Um, be sure and catch our next show, Painting Journeys. We'll see you next time. So long for now. Thank you.